Hey guys, Mars Lincoln here bringing you another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan battle video and so today we are going to talk about the LR, Gohan and Piccolo that is coming out tomorrow on both versions of the game. Uh, we do seemingly have a new time for banner releases. It's going to be one of those things where the first few videos I made, like I mentioned, oh, this is coming out earlier than the usual banner time. But I guess this is the usual banner time now going forward, right? Which is six o'clock in the morning UK time. I believe that's what, 10 p.m. PST and then something like 1 a.m. EST. Um, so, yeah, very early. I will be up to live stream for the summons, of course, though. So do uh, come check those out. Hopefully I'll see you guys on the stream. Um, and yeah, we are going to talk about whether or not this unit is worth summoning for. Um, bear in mind, of course, it is the part two LR, so it is a yellow coin LR. Um, and yeah, we're going to talk about the unit, talk about summoning, talk about everything that's going on in the meta and stuff at the moment, as well as everything that's going to be coming up in the future. So if you do find any of the information in the video helpful, do hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new. We are getting very close to 29k subs on the channel, so it would be very cool to hit that, especially today is my birthday. Shout out to anyone. This video should be going up after the birthday stream. Just done a little chill, couple of hours in the evening. Um, all these videos obviously been recorded earlier on, out for the day doing stuff, but wanted to stream in the evening to celebrate my birthday with the community a little bit. So by the time this video goes up, I believe that stream will be just have come to an end. So shout out to you if you were there, let me know in the comments. Um, but the time this video goes up should be 10 p.m. UK time. The banner will be out eight hours from this. So I don't know why the wiki isn't loading their card art. We can look at the card arts in one of the other posts that I've got up here, but this is the Super Tech Tide Turning Superpower Gohan Kid uh, slash Piccolo because it's an exchange unit. So that means that the card will link with other Kid Gohans because the slash Piccolo is part of the name. Um, and it does also mean that this is a unit whose name includes Piccolo for things like Beast Gohan's unit super, obviously Nails support part of his passive, but the interesting thing is we talked about Nails EZA and kind of hoping that the part two LR maybe would be a Piccolo so that he would be able to have a Namekian ally with Piccolo in his name um, as, you know, a, a unit that we could run who is actually new and meta relevant to get his full passive active. But of course, this unit is not a Namekian because being an exchange unit, they have all of the Kid Gohan links and categories. So they're a Planet Namek Saga or Bond of Master and Disciple leader for four key and 150% of stats. When it comes to yellow coin LRs, I have the same sort of mindset as I do about like easy A's and super easy A's where I don't really care too much about their leader skill because I'm probably not going to run them as a leader outside of maybe certain missions or battlefield. I am largely going to be running them on other teams, especially like the 200% teams that they're on. Right, so Planet Namek, Saga, a Bond of Master and Disciple. Their 12 key super is raise attack and defense, colossal damage to the enemy, and the 18 key is massively raise attack and defense for one turn. So the 12 key is an infinite stack. Uh, the 18 key massively for one turn. Massively raises, remember, is a 100% and does make a colossal damage to the enemy. So 100% defense on 18 key super is really good. Then they have attack and defense 200%, plus an additional attack 150 when performing a super. Key plus three, reduces damage received by 30%, chance to crit 30%, and launches an additional attack that has a high chance of becoming a super for three turns from the entry turn. Uh, then we have reduced damage received by 30% and chance of performing a crit 30% as the first attacker in the turn. Key three, reduces damage received by 20% and chance to crit 20% when there is another Planet Namek Saga or Namekians ally in the same turn and then recovers 20% HP at the end of the turn. So we've got to look at the way this is worded to break it down properly. So it's key plus three, 30% damage reduction, 30% crit chance and launch an additional attack that has a high chance to become a super for three turns. So though all of that is only included for the first three turns. But then they do get extra key damage reduction and crit chance as the first attacker in the turn. So that means for the first three turns, if you have a planet Namek Saga or Namekian ally in the same turn, they have 80% damage reduction in slot one, as well as an 80% chance to crit. So that's pretty good. Six extra key as well. Um, actually, no, the key is Namekian's and uh, the Bond of Master Disciple ally as well. So with all of that stuff activated for those first three turns, they get nine extra key as well, which is pretty good. Um, and then they can exchange when HP is 70% or less starting from the fourth turn or starting from the sixth turn from the start of battle. Um, and bear in mind, this says for three turns from the entry turn. So 
if you have these guys in slot seven and their first turn is slot three, if you keep them on rotation, they're going to be slot three, uh, turn three, then turn five, then turn seven, and they're passive, like the three turns will have run out, but then you will have met this restriction for six turns from the start of the battle. And then obviously if they're on turn two, they're going to be on turn two, turn four, and then turn six. So the realistically, having them on turn one, they're only going to transform early enough if you are at that 70% or less HP threshold. Because awkwardly, it means when you get to turn five, this three turn buff from their intro will have run out. But you're obviously not up to turn six yet. So it sounds kind of strange, but these units, this unit probably is best case scenario to start off in slot two, uh, turn two, I should say. But we'll see in practice, obviously, how they turn out in game. Um, they got typical Kid Gohan links, Saiyan Warrior Race, All in the Family, Gaze of Respect, Shocking Speed, Demonic Ways, which is a weird one, uh, Fierce Battle, Legendary Power, All in the Family, obviously very good defensive link. Um, but then because it's a Gohan and they get all of his links and categories, it means they're on Hybrid Saiyans, Goku Family, Youth, Bond of Parent and Child. So these guys are on a bunch of really, really good teams. Um, so once we get the exchange into Piccolo, uh, we have the same super attacks, infinite stack on the 12 key, massively raise on the 18 key. Then we have key plus 8, an attack and defense 250, additional attack 150 when performing a super, 50% damage reduction, 50% chance to crit, launch an additional attack that has a great chance of becoming a super, additional 4 key and launch an additional super starting from the turn in which they receive an attack. So as soon as he gets hit once, he's getting an extra 4 key and a guaranteed additional super. So you can either get that straight away on his first turn by putting him in slot one or obviously you can have him in slot two and he'll just get hit after attacking which potentially will be the best case scenario depending on his start of turn defense because he does have 50 percent damage reduction but i'm not sure if he's, he's not going to be tanking like big boss super attacks in slot one potentially um then when hp is 70 percent or more at the start of the turn he gets an additional damage reduction of 20 percent and gives super class allies 70 percent defense so in that situation because that will apply to himself as well because it doesn't say self-excluded uh with 70 percent damage reduction and a whole bunch of extra defense stacked on top he actually might be able to tank in slot one we'll have to see what his numbers are in game uh, when HP is 70% or less at the start of the turn, he has guaranteed dodge on the first turn, and then from his next turn onwards has a high chance to dodge, and then he always recovers 25% HP at the end of the turn. So that's really useful for if you are getting the exchange early because you are at 70% or less HP, you're then going to be getting the guaranteed dodge on his first appearance, and then he heals you at the end of the turn, which if you haven't taken any other damage, like outside of double digit normals and stuff, you're going to be at 95% HP after his first turn, which is pretty good. So he gets Brainiacs and Namekians as links to replace, uh, one of them is all in the family, which is a little bit awkward. Uh, Shocking speed was still there. Uh, is the other one oh yeah Saiyan warrior race of course so he's got an okay link set but obviously depending on the teams you run like because you can run this guy on a team of like goku family for example because starts off as gohan so then once he transforms his links aren't going to be as good but he is on a lot of decent categories he seems like a very solid unit it's hard to say with characters that are just like numbers based because he's got a decent percentage damage reduction but it's very much going to depend what his uh, start of turn defense is because, as we've said before, characters like, you know, Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta has, is it 80 or 90% damage reduction? But he's got, like, 100k defense. Or, like, AGL Golden Freezer nowadays. He does have 90% damage reduction, the TUR one. But then he's got, like, 100k defense, which means he's still taking huge damage from, like, big super attacks, right? So, it'll be interesting to see, but it does seem like a very cool, very powerful unit. The thing I would say is obviously tailor made to be on the Planet Namek Zaga team because of the extra buffs here from the ally. Uh, Namekians, I mean, I guess if you're running him on a Bond of Master or Disciple team, you can run some of the other Piccolos. But Planet Namek Zaga is a team that has been buffed by this celebration, but I wouldn't say is like a super top tier team at the moment. So definitely something to think about when deciding whether to summon for this guy. Now, a couple of the other things that will be worth considering as well, if we take a look over at the breakdown thread from Proton when we got the data download, um, there's the artworks there. I know if I click on this, it's going to not let me see the uh, the full thing properly because it's uh, this view for showing the tweets isn't the best. But 
Um, we can see their arts. And then a couple of bits of information that we know, which of course will help out here, is of course it is a yellow coin banner. So it has the new, I say new, it's not really new anymore, I guess, but the pity system that applies to legendary summon banners. So just like the Vegeta banner that has the new Philodocon Fest pity system, which basically just copies the legendary summon format. Every three multis, you get a guaranteed featured for the first 21 multis. And of course, every multi, you get 10 of these pity coins and you need 200 in order to get the uh, unit guaranteed, one copy only, which is the equivalent of a thousand stones, but you also can trade in any SSRs you get uh, that are already rainbowed for three extra pity coins each. Um, this has worked out for me. Obviously, I know I'm at the extreme end of the spectrum where I have most of the units that I could possibly pull. If it's not going to be the new unit, I'm probably going to have them rainbowed. So I will get to trade in quite a bunch of SSRs, especially if you do end up getting like god animations and stuff like that. So you're pulling multiple SSRs in one multi. Um, and so that will allow you to get a bunch of extra coins. So I think it averaged out for me on these banners at about 700 stones roughly, rather than the full thousand because of the coins that you can get from trading in those SSRs. So again, that's something to bear in mind if your box is pretty full on you know, these newer, older units, well, newer or older banner units, uh, general pool units, you are going to get a bunch of extra coins as well. And then one other thing to bear in mind if you are a spender is that we do know from the data download that there is a premium legendary summon ticket. This one, I think, has been the same format for the last couple of legendary summon banners now, where it's one of the more expensive ticket packs, but you get uh, a set of 30 which lets you do a multi i believe is it guaranteed featured i can't remember now actually but it will summon for 30 characters and you get 30 pity coins so the thing is if you are a spender and you choose to buy both of these ticket packs you already have 60 of the pity coins which is over a quarter of what you need like the whole total so my example for this that I've mentioned a few times before now is when AGL Ultimate Gohan came out for the Golden Week celebration, I used both the ticket packs, so I got 60 coins, and then I got to the pity in like just over 400 stones. So if you are someone who spends on the game and you want to summon on this banner, the tickets can give you a good starting point because not only do you, I mean, you could just pull the LR off the ticket and then you could save your stones for a different banner. Um, but if you don't, you do get a bunch of the coins to help towards getting to that total. So for everybody else, if you're not a spender, like I say, somewhere between the 1,000 and 700 mark, roughly, depending on how many SSRs you can trade in. But if spending is an option for you um, and you are, I always say the ticket packs are good value based on what they cost compared to buying stones, you get more units overall for your money. So it is normally a good deal. Now, the one thing we don't know yet, which of course is always a factor when it comes to deciding whether to summon, is the banner format. So I thought I'd bring up this one. This is the Ginyu one, because obviously he was the last Namek uh, saga. Fairly recent uh, release, of course. Still a little while ago now on Global, but one of the more recent Yellow Coin releases. And remember that these banner formats now, we have three featured LRs. We have the new one and two other ones. And then we have a couple of featured SSRs, some of which are relevant, right? We had the two Ginyu Force SSRs, and we also had the Vegeta and Nappa, although they're from the Saiyan Saga, right? They're all part of like Space Traveling Warriors, Terrifying Conquerors. So when it comes to this banner, one of the things I think would be very interesting is the Tech Ribrien LR trio weren't that old already when this guy came out and they were featured on his banner. So I do believe there is a possibility that Ginyu could be featured on this banner because of course he's another recent Namek Saga LR. I don't think he's returned featured on a banner. Obviously he's been in, he's in every LR banner technically unfeatured uh, outside of like the Dokon Fest ones. So I know people pulled him during the anniversary or during Worldwide on the Carnival banners, but I could definitely see him being featured on this banner. And if he is, that certainly does add a bit of extra value, right? Because with the Namek Saga team getting buffs, uh, this unit is very good. Although, of course, very much designed around Special Pose or full Ginyu Force team. But they are an LR that I believe I've only got the one copy of, so I certainly would be okay with them being on the banner for sure. Um, and then when it comes to the SSRs, they did mention in the news that that STR Angry Kamehameha Goku was going to be featured on an upcoming banner. So we basically know that he's going to be on there. Um, I think was Nail... Nail wasn't featured on Vegeta's banner, was he? So he very much could be featured on the banner as well. 
Um, I would imagine some other Namek Saga SSRs. I wouldn't be surprised, to be honest, if Ginyu is one of the featured LRs that they throw the uh, Berta and Jace and the Rakum and Guldo on there as well. So we would imagine that it's going to be mostly Namek Saga um, SSRs. Full Power Freezer obviously is a Dokon Fest, the physical one, uh, who just got his super easy A. That's why he was featured on the Vegeta banner. Um, but as you can see, even on this banner, right, we got Beerus, Turles, Champa, Whis. They are on some of the categories, right, as the Ginyu Force, like Space Traveling Warriors. Um, but they, of course, are not Planet Namek Saga related. So there is the possibility that since the LR is these guys, one of the other LRs or SSRs on the banner could be Bond of Master and Disciple characters, right, because that is their other leader skill. So... Be interesting to see what the featured units are because there was no animated banner art there wasn't anything in the data download um i think because they mentioned goku specifically i don't know whether nail would be featured because i feel like they would have mentioned both of them right although nail i think is on that other banner the category support one is it the planet namek saga category that one has the um agl dokon fest ginyu and then it has a couple of the LRs, the SSR Ginyu Force, Third Form Freezer, Tech Piccolo. Yeah, that one doesn't have Nail on it either. So I guess Nail will be featured on this banner, I would imagine, since he's not actually on any of the banners that are currently live from what I can see from scrolling through. So I can imagine Nail being one of the other uh, featured SSRs as well. Um, and his EZA, pretty decent. Interesting, gonna, it'd be interesting to run him with this guy because he doesn't get his damage reduction because they're not on the Mechian ally. But he does get his support and he is a stacker. And in the showcase video that I did for him, he gets up over a million defense fairly quickly. Which means even without the damage reduction, he will be tanking normals in a lot of instances. Um, and then of course he provides the Namek Saga and technically the Namekians um, condition for these guys. So it will be interesting to try him out on that team. Um, but yeah, I can definitely see the LR Ginyu Force uh, being featured on the banner so let me know what you guys think of the gohan and piccolo down below in the comment section i think to answer the you know very question of the video the theme summon or skip um i think i would have to say for the large majority of players especially if you're free to play or a low spender on the game this banner probably is a fairly easy skip the namek saga category team even with these guys being added to it is far from being like in the highest tier of best teams in the game um and i mean it'll be interesting to try these guys out like i will try them on other teams like bond of master and disciple getting those like links like all in the family active and stuff like that will certainly be interesting but i feel like they're definitely not a must-have unit for your box even if their individual performance on their best setup is really good they're probably not a must-have unit obviously if you're a mid spender or like a mini whale collector you're probably going to summon for them because of the pity which is of course a great option now you know that if you summon at least a certain amount you're definitely going to get the unit but when it comes to things in the future remember that we are probably going to get another dokon fest either right at the very end of october or the very beginning of november then we have heroes in mid to late november and then another dokon fest either end of november slash beginning of december and we already know from the roadmap that they showed us that we are getting another carnival lr in december which obviously happened last year when we got the release of the LR Super Saiyan Trio. And then, of course, with the schedules being synced now, we will be getting the Jewel Dokon Fest for New Year's, which obviously last year was Dragon Fist Goku and Harudagan. That comes out at the end of December as well. So bearing in mind all of that stuff coming up in the future, if you are free to play or a low spender, even if you have the like thousand stones that would basically guarantee you get a copy of these guys, I would recommend you save those for one of the other bigger things coming up but let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section of the unit themselves whether you like them or not are you going to be summoning are you a fan of the unit but you are going to skip let me know all your thoughts on them what do you think the banner lineup will be let me know all of that down below in the comment section so that is going to be it for the video guys this has been the mask ningen smash that like button subscribe to the channel if you are new check out the links down below and i will see you all again soon have a good one